What up? It's your boy T Bear. The reaction today is uh, this is WrestleMania. WrestleMania. It's Wrestle Wednesday. This is part two of Wrestle Wednesday. I did some earlier. This I'm gonna do some now. So a lot of these are gonna be like stuff that's like the the negative of the is well too as well too. So I caught this when I was watching the Raw Raws from Raws Denny. When I caught what video was it the um. Then Dodi made mistakes as well too. This one is gonna be another one. Was like it's called Far Dodi matches that may be a uh, fan embarrassing. And I told y'all before, we went through hell at one point, and we saw that the, the down area, the down area of Dodi was like 2015 to 2019, something like that. Yeah, we went through hell being gun hole fans and faithful fans of Dodi, and this is another video. To, to, to show that as well too. So without further ado, four WWE matches that may be a, a fan embarrassing. Let's get it. Oh, by the way, Ron Dan, you you get you, you get to subscribe for me, brother, brother. Anyway, because you put some cool you you put out some some interesting videos to check out. There have been plenty of WWE matches that have gone down throughout the years that wrestling fans look back on fondly. But at the same time, there have also been matches that have made wrestling fans embarrassed to be fans and made some WWE superstars regret. Now, like I say, out of all the nonsense they did at home, this one right here is the main one I hate to death. He's the main one I feel is the reason why we got the dickhead version of him now with the tribal creep thing. And a lot of we're dealing with the bullshit we're dealing with right now with this second ring of terror. I swear. Anyway, nice the run rumble thing was one, but this one right here was the ice on the fucking cake while we dealing with this dickhead now. The dickhead version of him now. Anyway the match entirely. We're going to start off today's list with a match that every WWE critic and fan alike would probably like to forget actually happened. Amazing. That was that match right this match right here was other bullshit. <laughs> this match right here was other bullshit. I feel bad for I feel like a great line, I feel like that contribution well we got the demon we have now you know he might be turning face soon. That's as long as you don't cash in on Cody. You mess with anybody else, and even you, you catch on CM Punk Paul Carey. Don't fuck, don't mess with Cody when he wins. I'm praying. May 16th, 2021, yeah, WWE presented bullshit. WrestleMania Backlash from the Thunderdome in Tampa, Florida. This show happened to be sponsored by a zombie apocalypse movie called mm -hmm. Army of the Dead, which was starring former WWE yeah. superstar Dave Bautista. Now, a movie starring a former WWE superstar sponsoring a WWE event wasn't the issue here, but the way they promoted the movie during the show was what got fans heated. One of the matches on the card that night was The Miz versus Damian Priest in a lumberjack match, a match where a bunch of wrestlers called Lumberjacks surround the ring while the two competitors remain inside. But for this match specifically, the Lumberjacks wouldn't be the usual Lumberjacks fans are used to seeing. Because before the show went on the air, Batista sent out this tweet saying, wishing good luck to all the WWE superstars competing tonight at WrestleMania Backlash. Sorry I couldn't make it, but some of my friends will. Fans began to speculate what that last part exactly meant. And they would soon figure this out later on in the show when John Morrison went to visit the Lumberjacks and realized they they were all zombies. The same zombies featured in his movie, Army of the Dead. The Miz went out to the ring where he would get surrounded by zombies. In this match, we saw commentators running away to a safer place because of a zombie who was hiding under their desk. John Morrison getting kidnapped by a bunch of zombies, but the icing on the cake, however, came when the Miz was surrounded by the undead lumberjacks and was literally eaten alive after the match. I thought I was, I, I thought I was tripping. Some of them guys are now NXT guys because that did, I think one of them was I think the one on top right there on the right that's uh Braun Breaker. I'm actually as hell and one before they just cut to the next scene was Von Wagner. Yeah I think some of them were like guys that worked in the port the PC center right now. Ridiculous This match caught a lot of criticism yeah. from both Yeah, fans right there. The Pause right there. Right there. That's Braun Wagner on the right. And then one on the lower. That's that's Braun Breaker, man. 
Wow, and I'll rile it in a few later on. <laughs> Media with the New York Post calling it one of WWE's saddest moments, but giving praise to Miz and Morrison for trying to make the most out of this disastrous situation. One fan was also so offended that he even voiced his displeasure to Batista himself, who actually replied back by saying, What the f are you telling me? You think I booked a bunch of f zombies? I'm on a damn plane. Shouldn't you be tweeting Vince? <laughs> So if you're looking for a good first match to show a non-wrestling fan, a lumberjack match where all the lumberjacks are a bunch of zombies probably isn't the most ideal first choice, as is the next match on our list from the January 31st episode of SmackDown. It's really hard to believe now that there was a time when Roman Reigns actually lost matches. And one of those matches that he lost was against Baron Corbin at TLC 2019. A couple weeks before that match, however, Roman faced off against Dolph Ziggler on the December 9th episode of SmackDown, which ended in disaster. After beating Dolph, Corbin, Ziggler, and Corbin's security handcuffed Reigns to one of the ring posts, then proceeded to dump dog food over Reigns due to the fact that he was known as the Big dog yeah i blame this i blame this mainly out of all this shit that he got he went through as a baby face i blame this mainly for why we got the dickhead we have now i blame this mainly for why we have the tribal dickhead right now this is why we got the tribal creep going on and why we go through the nonsense we're going through right now because of this damn moment here during this time. This would set up a loser eats dog food match on the January 31st episode of SmackDown. And, Reigns we, would and why the Busos had, had, why the Usos had, to, had, had to be the Busos for a while as well too. Before me and Jimmy J came out, Jimmy had a little, a little face run and decided to crawl back to the bloodline. But anyway, this is probably why the, the bloodline situation, well, wait, we got heal bloodline because of this bullshit here end up winning the match and handcuffed Corbin to the ring post just like he did to Reigns a month prior, then proceeded to dump buckets of dog food onto him. Appearing on Tetragrammaton with Rick Rubin, Paul Heyman revealed that this dog food storyline was the moment Roman Reigns had enough of WWE creative. The feud rivalry. Exactly. Exactly. Meaning this is why we got what we have now. He's probably just gonna quit or whatever if they kept him babyface. And that and I and you see why? Cause of that bullshit right there. That bullshit is the reason why we got this dickhead right here. Story with Baron Corbin over dog food had weighed on him enough to where he said, I've had enough. I've reached the cap. I can't go any further as the big dog. I have so much more to offer. And since I'm taking time off, I'm not coming back as the same person. So despite the dog food storyline. Thank you. So yeah, thank you, Vince. Vince, you fucking, you fucking seen now, out of touch, dickhead. While we have this stick, we have the current tribal dickhead right now because you want to do this bullshit. Your fucking fault. Whoever, whoever made this, or is it Vince? Whoever made this idea is your fucking fault. Fuck you. How about that? being a dark time to be a Roman Reigns fan, it looks like it helped contribute to Roman Reigns transitioning from the big dog yep. to the tribal to chief we know today. Exactly. A silver lining fans are this grateful for, but unfortunately, no silver linings were found during the next match in our list from Hell in a Cell 2021. Mm. In the summer of 2021, Alexa Bliss, who was then in her Fiend era, entered into a feud with Shayna Baszler, who she was scheduled to meet one-on-one -on -one at the Hell in a Cell PLE in late June. Shayna would visit Alexa's playground on the June 7th edition of Monday Night Raw, where she would end up stepping on Alexa's possessed doll, Lily. This would then be followed with the Thunderdome going absolutely haywire, with flames shooting up from the side of the entrance ramp, forcing Shayna to run backstage, where items would mysteriously mm. begin to fall behind her. She then barricaded herself in a room and the show would go off the air with Shanna yelling after seeing Lily in the reflection of a mirror. Now wrestling is all about suspending your disbelief, but on this night, when we had to believe that all of this happened because of a possessed doll, made it an impossible thing to do. Fast forward to their Hell in a Cell match, and it didn't get any better. Because during the match, Shayna had Alexa in a wrist lock, and Alexa used her mind to get her to let go. Alexa then locked eyes with Nia Jax. Oh yeah, man, her slapped her. Slapping Reginald. Slap Reginald, she then yeah. Up by hitting Shayna with a twisted bliss and winning the match. It was a pretty far-fetched moment to include in a match, but 
But if you're looking for Yo. more far fetched. <laughs> What's funny? This was on, I guess, what the best movie that year, or best of the uh, moments of WWE that year. This was when, uh, shout out to In the Clutch for well. Ross was watching this faithfully. He showed this to, this is like not too long after the Tripoli finally got back. And he showed this, and he showed this. He like, what the, f and he, he had to explain this shit. Him and Doug was like, what the fuck? And W got that damn bad. Of course, you know the only his rebuttal is not the only thing. Only thing popping right now is the tribal is is, is, is the tribal queef right now. in SmackDown, but still, yeah. Even guys who used to be big fans like Dub and Tribuli was looking at at Dudley like, "What the fuck has happened to Dudley?" Fetch the moments. Wait until you see what happens during the next match on our list on September. If this the one about twenty six, twenty twenty one, Extreme Rules went down from the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, them. Ohio. The main event of the show. Yeah. This man, this man's not only made me be a fan of wrestling, it bears me a, a, there's a fan. It made me want to quit rust, quit being a wrestling fan. It's one of the most the, the tiny, almost big clean want to quit wrestling fan. But not just because of that, because of dick, because of dickhead fans I dealt with in these groups. As well, too. Especially one decade, I was I was kept digging with for a while, and another group I used to be part of. Nah, as well, too. Shout out to them. You know, they don't want me back no more because I had left and, and didn't respond back in the time to to for for the return. Because I like I said, I needed some time, but whatever. It's another story. Um, cause though, I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, saw Roman Reigns take on the demon Finn Balor. Like I said, was a lot, I'll play this. There was a lot of folks in that group, in the current, in some group I'm in now, that was some Roman, some tribal dick riders. I'm going I'm to say it just like it is. Championship, and although it was a pretty decent match, it ended in the most bizarre way possible. After hitting Reigns with a coup de gras, Balor would go for the pin, but before the referee could count to three, the Usos pulled Balor mm -hmm. off and began to attack him outside oh, yeah. of the ring. He'd be able to retaliate a little bit, but before he knew it, Reigns came out of nowhere and mm -hmm. speared him right through the barricade. Balor would lay motionless on the mat, and when it looked like all hope of him winning the Universal title was lost, suddenly the sound mm -hmm. of a heartbeat began to play throughout the arena. And then result in Finn yeah. literally rising from the dead. I thought this part, I, and I'm lying, I thought this part was cool. Oh, the match was cool. He would then begin to use this newfound power to get the upper hand on Reigns. Yeah. But before he could hit another coup de gras, potentially securing the victory, the rope suddenly broke from under his feet and he fell into the ring. Reigns would take full advantage of this by hitting Finn with a spear and retaining his title. Pretty much, you just found, you just wanted to find a reason to have, get another bullshit in and reason just to keep for him to keep the goddamn title as well too now i mean i'm not gonna lie dude there was, it was the, the home room the whole moment of him uh reviving and getting his little resurgent i ain't gonna lie i thought it was cool but i said folks might thought that was wild but that other bullshit was nonsense that had to do with dickheads and certain group told myself you know god and turn hell or you know god don't like demons or anything or anything then you know on this reverse bizarre world bullshit trying to Think anybody who root for Finn are bad or root for a bad guy because he's a demon and you should be rooting for the tribal cheek cheek because they can't keep their mouth off the tribal dick. Anyway, but yeah, that right there was bullshit. That right there was bullshit just to keep the title on him as well too. Damn, like I out of all that was definitely one of the most bullshit ways just to keep the title on him for that to do that as well too. That was just dumb. Anyway, too and. Ironically, I feel like that was a seed. The reason why we got Hills Hill. Uh, what is shit going on? What's the update going on? Anyway, that's probably why the bullshit we got. Why we got Hill Finn Hill Finn Balor right now with, with Judgment Day because he probably got tired of that bullshit either. Either way, that was that was other bullshit. What I, I thought was other bullshit in the beginning, but then. Dickheads in, in the social media of wrestling who, especially tribal nut huggers, made it worse to make to the point that I almost want to quit wrestling fan because this is all I got to do with being a wrestling fan. I don't think so no more. But like I said, uh, if I didn't love this wrestling fandom so much, I would have been quit years ago. Oh, as well too. That's almost like.
It was an ending that has since left both fans and Finn Balor himself questioning what exactly happened that night. Here's what Balor had to say about it on CBS Sports. I feel like the finish kind of left the story open-ended a little bit. I feel like we definitely need to readdress that and revisit, you know, what happened that night. Oh yeah, and I think I um, then almost quit the. That's I think that was the last one. I mean, quit the group as well too. Too. I I, I flat. I, they. Is it's a certain peanut gang group as well too? Because uh, it's not the call peanut gang. It's like a peanut gallery because we had a little faction war and things as well too. They did this because I think that's the one after when John Cena uh took took the sign as well too, and they was and then some group trying to say that John Cena was a bad person for doing that and as well too. Anybody root that root for the bad guy? I know as well too. Then I clapped back in my own way way, and I got and they tried to villainize me for trying to clap back so. That's why I was done as well too. I think, like I said, I felt like the whole part of the tribal, tribal chief, chief tribal creep for our reign as well too. Hills Roman Reigns, especially that whole twenty twenty one year of a wrestling as well too. Um, almost it was plenty of time. Almost quit being a wrestling fan. Uh, over because of other wrestling, other fans and and groups as well too. To one because of anything. If you one feel the last anybody that don't. Uh, acknowledge the tribal queef to uh, the whole hurt business situation as well too not because of the hurt business themselves but because I don't root for hills or anything and they when hurt man was the best faction ever and then a black faction had that they think just because they this they the they think that you had to be the Issa Rae um Oscar Oscar uh red carpet moment I I hope everybody is black. I root for everybody's black. That's what it's like with that. And then you, you're not your child villainizing you for it as well, too. But yeah, I, I, I like I said, I dealt with some times where I wanted to quit being a wrestling fan. This was, and this was like really around this era at the time as well, too, man. It was. And that's why, other reason I, that's the one reason probably why I'm really hoping that they do have Roman drop the title as well, too, man. Because, oh, man. What a year! What a era we dealt with for some wrestling fans. Maybe a good era for some, but a troubles era for others. You know what I'm saying? So you know, continue that storyline. Obviously, things change with Brock's return. So if you're mm, a WWE yeah. fan and you okay, watched so it was any Brock of these sport- so Brock return was after this. I wasn't sure if this was so. Did you see anything might happen before that? Then either way, it was, I don't, I'm trying to remember what happened when. Either way. Matches with the non wrestling fan, you probably yeah, had a- it was Brock, and then because that's why I looked at the video with Ross saying, Why, where, why are we getting Brock and Roman again? Yeah, hard time defending and the then, products, and then the day one should happen. Yeah, after watching them, but on the bright side, it was probably a lot easier defending these matches than when the gobbledygooker, a man dressed in a full on turkey suit, won an actual WWE title. That, without uh-huh. context, would probably make a non wrestling fan's head explode. So, yeah. Either way, this was a good video as well too, though. Definitely remind me of some moments that made me do did make me embarrassed to be a fan. That was one and I feel like a lot of these was the reason why certain hill turns has happened. Yeah, I think the four I literally the four was soft for the, the Alexa Bliss nonsense since right there it was was bad as well too. Like I said, it 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 made it made guys from the clutch feel like like Double Hit has lost their damn mind since they took a, they stepped away from as well too because they only watched the highlights, but um yeah between this between the shit with uh, the army or dead bullshit with Damian Priest to the shit with the dog food with Roman Reigns and the shit right here with include, involving Roman Reigns with Ben Balor it's probably why we got the Hill version of all three of them guys right now ridiculous anyway other than that if you like my reaction like like share subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T. We're signing off. One love.